In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Aside from the Star Wars, Disney, Harry Potter movies that I go to see every year with my kids when they come out, I usually manage to get to the theater about one time per year to see about one other movie. And this year, the movie that I got to see was Bohemian Rhapsody, which tells the story of Freddie Mercury and the band Queen. Now, for those of you who don't know, Freddie Mercury was this rather quiet, awkward young person who mostly didn't feel at home in his own skin, except when he was performing music or making music. But he and the rest of the band Queen, they find their way to one another, and they start making this wild, outlandish music that didn't really fit with the template of what pop music was supposed to be at the time. And of course, this made their record label a little bit nervous. And so Freddie and the band had to assure their record label that everything was going to be okay and that they were going to be massively popular because they were going to reach out to all of the misfits and all of the outcasts and all of the people who felt like they didn't quite belong. Well, you know how the story unfolds. They're absolutely right. They have this massive popularity. They have all of these huge hits. They sell millions of albums. They sell out stadiums. They go on world tours. Even today, people who wouldn't count themselves fans of Queen have probably heard songs like We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions because those songs have become such a part of our collective musical consciousness. They had this huge success by reaching out to the outcasts. That's really interesting. It's really interesting that you could have mainstream popular success by reaching out to the people who feel like they're misfits. And Queen isn't the first or the last band to do something like this. I think of Nirvana and Lady Gaga and the Sex Pistols and Green Day and the list goes on and on and on and on. All these rock stars who have all this huge success by connecting with the misfits. That suggests to me that it's a pretty common mainstream experience to feel as if you're an outsider, to feel as if there's some missing piece in your life, as if there's some way in which you don't quite fit in. It got me thinking about my own high school experience and how many times in high school I felt like such a geek. And I just felt like everybody else knew how to fit in. And I, the whole fitting in thing was quite mysterious to me. Well, you know what? One of the great things about growing up is that you realize that everybody's story is a lot more complex than what it looks on the surface. And I would say I've hardly ever met any person who I would think has all of the beauty and all of the popularity and all the magnetism going for them who didn't also at one time or another struggle with those feelings of insecurity, those feelings of feeling like you don't quite fit in, those feelings of maybe there's a part of my identity that nobody else understands, I'm going to say that actually human alienation, that sense of that missing piece inside, that is an extremely common part of our human experience. 
I'm also going to say that if our faith doesn't speak to that feeling, that feeling of being an outsider, that feeling of being out of step, then our faith really doesn't have much to say at all. Tonight, we enter into the beginning of our Christian story, the beginning of Jesus' story. And isn't it interesting that Jesus' story starts with a cast of characters who could easily be described as misfits. We have Mary, who is a teenager who is in trouble. Everybody's scandalized. Everybody's talking about her because she has gotten pregnant outside of marriage. We have Joseph, who isn't really sure that he wants to be part of this story at all and isn't quite convinced of what God is up to here. We have the shepherds, who are the first to hear the story of Jesus' birth. Well, shepherds, they were kind of the outcasts of the outcasts. They were considered sort of dirty and uncivilized, living outside in the fields, a little bit dangerous, a little bit unruly. And they're brought into the heart of this Christmas story. And all of these people, the shepherds and Mary and Joseph, all of them represent the masses of Jesus' people who don't feel like they're at home in their own land, who feel like they don't have enough food, they don't have enough money, and they have been well taught that they have no power and they have no voice to change anything. This little band of misfits who introduce us to our Christmas story, we might say that they're sort of the prototypical rock stars. They're the ones who assure us that this story is about us too, that we also have a connection to this story. But of course, God isn't using this band of misfits in order to make the top hot 100 list or to get a billion streams on YouTube or to sell out stadiums. That's not what this story is about for God. God has one purpose and one purpose only in this whole Christmas story, in this whole story of Jesus, and that purpose is love, responding to that experience of human alienation with love. And so this whole band of misfits draws our attention to this little newborn baby. At the best of times, newborns have no power. They're the most vulnerable of all God's creatures. They are completely reliant on the care of loving adults around them. They need everything. And most of all, they just need milk and a loving embrace. And this particular newborn Jesus is even more vulnerable than most babies because around him there are so few resources and so little power to the point that Jesus is born in a barn. And the only place that they have for a cradle is just a great big pile of livestock feed. That's how Jesus' story starts. Jesus the ultimate misfit. Jesus, the ultimate outsider. And it's because we can so clearly see in Jesus that he also had that missing piece inside of him. It's because of that that we say that we see in Jesus what it is to be fully and completely human. That is at the heart of our human experience. 
But even as a newborn, even as this bawling, red-faced, vulnerable newborn baby, we also start to see the fullness of God's life, what God is about, how that missing piece inside of us is the perfect fit for God's love. Jesus, fully human and fully God, because we see how that missing piece is brought into partnership with God's love. And God's love overflows in the life of Jesus to the point that we say as Christians that if we want to know who God is and what God is about, then we look to the story of Jesus. Now, as Jesus grows up, we find out that to be in partnership with God's love is never just a one-to-one transaction, that it always spills over into the life of the world around us. And so Jesus grows up to go out seeking all of the misfits and all of the outsiders and all of the people who have enough courage to admit that there's a missing piece inside of them as well. And Jesus goes to them with the news that that missing piece is the perfect fit also for God's love. That God names and claims and commissions them for work in the world to be part of God's kingdom. Jesus continues to seek and search us out today all of the ways in which we might feel like we don't quite fit in our experiences of being alienated or outsiders. And Jesus' message to each one of us is that this is good news. It's good news to feel like there's a missing piece inside of us because it's that missing piece that allows us to receive God's love. And then it's that missing piece that God's going to use in order to send us out in compassion to all of the other misfits out there who also need to know that they are loved. I decided this Christmas to mix some Queen into my Christmas playlist. Because this Christmas, I'm embracing my inner misfit. I invite you to do the same. No matter what soundtrack you might choose for the holidays, I invite you this Christmas to embrace your inner misfit too. Because God's love depends on it. Amen.